Balashi Institute is a network of 22, now 23, very soon, cultural institutes abroad. And the main focus of our activity is cultural, but there is a quote-unquote mothership in Budapest, a, a Balashi headquarters, if you like. And Balashi headquarters runs the Publishing Hungary program, uh, which is funded by the uh, National Culture Fund, and its express aim is to promote Hungarian literature abroad. Now, we work, we operate in a spend-down model, which means that there's a certain amount of money allotted at the beginning of a cycle to the program, and the, and the program spends down. And the first cycle is now completed, and it's about to be renewed, so we're entering a new cycle very soon, which means uh, once it starts, uh, probably a relatively uh, permissive environment when it comes to uh, translations and book promotions. Uh, the focus of publishing Hungary is twofold. First, there is uh, the idea to support appearances of authors at works at book fairs, which has been done in the past years in, in Europe extensively. Hungary was just uh, this past month a guest of honor at the Prague book fair uh, Prague Book Show, which is one of the largest, uh, the largest in Central Europe and one of the large ones in Europe. Uh, but previously, uh, there have been uh, emphatic appearances at various shows, including, of course, Leipzig, Paris, and so forth. Uh, but the other one is uh, to support the publication of works through matchmaking and support, which means that uh, Publishing Hungary helps uh, publishers find grant opportunities, uh, subsidies, uh, and also raw material from, Hungary, from Hungarian literature. And the main person uh, for that is Zsuzsana Szabó, who is the Project Hungary, uh, Publishing Hungary project leader. And you can actually find her uh, most of the time at the Balash Institute booth right now here in the seats, but very easy to contact her. Now, specifically when it comes to supporting translations, um, Publishing Hungary is happy to help. Uh, the source of the funding for translations, however, comes from the Hungarian Books and Translations Office, uh, which can be uh, uh, contacted, of course, through Balashi Institute and through Publishing Hungary, but is a separate organization. And its two main activities are direct financial support, on the one hand, and on the other hand, information channeling and networking. Uh, their web page is very easy to remember. It's booksandtranslations.hu. And if you visit booksandtranslations.hu, uh, you get a feel of the scope of their work. But I'm still going to go into some detail. When it comes to financial support, uh, they give grants to foreign publishers to help subsidize translations, but also, to tra uh, uh, also direct grants for translations to translators so that they can prepare samples of upcoming works and even grants to translate foreign works into Hungarian. So this is a grant uh, giving organization first and foremost, but also uh, it helps connect publishers, agencies, translations up on request as well, but also proactively and uh, can provide all copyright and bibliographical information when, when a volume or a, a collection of texts, especially, can be complicated, is in preparation. And also, if you require photographic material, background material, archival material, and so forth, uh, since it's connected to the uh, Museum of Literary History, the Petofi Museum in Budapest, they have access to, to all the data and all the raw materials, archival materials that a publisher might need now, you may want to hang on to the information that you just heard and you just saw, and that's very easily done. At the Balash Institute booth, you are uh, requested, if you're interested, to pick up a copy of uh, the publication for this book expo, which is New Windows on Hungarian Translation. And uh, the other opportunity, if you're based in New York, is to simply contact the New York branch of Balash Institute, which is us, the Hungarian Cultural Center at 457th Avenue. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, look, look at your request, your needs, and uh, set you up with the part, the office of Balash Institute that can help you best and, and, and most directly. Of course, uh, 
to come to my second main point, is of course the question is why publish uh, Hungarian literature in English and why translate it into English? Uh, it's an interesting story, uh, the fate of you know, Hungarian literature being published in the world. Uh, it is a success story and at the same time, with, in English speaking countries, it has made much fewer inroads than in other major uh, markets. Notably, German, French uh, markets have always been kind of a success story for Hungarian literature. And more recently, strangely, Turkish and Italian markets also coming up and there is an increased interest from India for Hungarian works. Uh, so there is kind of, if you like, a track record of success in, in various middle size to large size markets. Uh, there is also some instances of success in, in English speaking countries, but it's definitely not the same uh, you know, depth of, of, of publications that are, that are happening in let's say the German market where Hungarian books appear, a number of them every year, and they at least once a year, twice a year, there is a book from Hungary in, printed in German that does uh, have not just critical, but also uh, considerable commercial success as well. Uh, of course, there are our home markets, if you like, the fellow East Central European countries, but those are smaller markets, most important and, and, and noticeable as a trend uh, that has relevance here is the, the sustained success for about 20 years now of Hungarian works in translation, uh, having very significant commercial responses in, 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 in larger markets like France and Germany. Now, who are the guys who are providing the ammunition for this? Uh, Hungarian prose uh, has really been experiencing a, a staggering growth period for the past 20 years. It's very interesting because originally the supposition was that authors produce great works under a dictatorship. So come 89, you know, many people expected these works to kind of dry up. And while some people have made the, the argument that it's partly at least true for Hungarian film, for Hungarian literature this has certainly not been the case. And now there are actually three major age cohorts or age groups that, that are competing for attention and that are all scoring successes in their own way. I call them, this is my invention, I just call them the stalwarts as kind of the older generation. The new middle generation are now more established and, and the new boss people, so the, the really young authors who have scored one or two surprise successes domestically or internationally. Now I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be exhaustive here, anything but exhaustive, because you can get excerpts and short bios in the aforementioned new windows on Hungarian literature publications which are available at the stand. Uh, there are two of them available for uh, you and they contain uh, always a short biographical sketch of an author and a short translated excerpt. Uh, but I still want to just highlight uh, how kind of these age cohorts operate. Uh, the stalwarts, so the older generation, they include first and foremost uh, Imre Kertész, who is a Nobel Prize winner for literature, uh, and is best known for the novel Faithlessness from 1975. Uh, uh, which is a, a, a Holocaust novel, and Imre Kertész himself is a survivor. Uh, but he still produces, uh, he has produced until recently, and there is new work awaiting translation from a Nobel Prize winner, which of course could be financed with relative ease because of the way that, that Kertész carries. But if we want to, however, highlight the, the one author who has made, achieved the greatest critical success in the English language markets in the past few years, that's definitely Peter Nadas. His Parallel Stories has been one of the most rave-reviewed book of the past few years, from the New Yorker to the Washington Post, uh, of New York Times, and everyone really loved the book, and it was a lasting, major, critical, and, and a considerable commercial success as well. But there are others in this generation who have you know, the accolades, the achievements, uh, who are quote-unquote brands, like Peter Esterházy, Laszlo Krasna Horkai, who was just here for the World Voices Festival in April, uh, and Zsuzsa Rakowski as well, who have long and proven track records, and that's why I call them the stalwarts. The new middle generation is an interesting bunch. Now, this is not an age group, and that's not how I, uh, they are grouped here. Uh, they are mainly grouped here because these are the people who have several works in translation now and have 
important successes, but not decade-long track records. Uh, maybe the most successful in terms of international recognition has been Jerry Dragoman, due to his winning of the Jan Mikalski Prize, which is a Swiss prize for uh, the best work in, from a foreign language. Uh, it's given by a Swiss uh, foundation, and it's uh, considered one of the major prizes for foreign literature. Uh, and he is the, the, the recent winner of that uh, for the White King. But there are other people who have achieved many foreign successes uh, with a few works. Uh, some of them are really young, like Christian Greccio, who is 37, I think. Uh, Janos Hai is 50. But in terms of their international presence, they belong to one group, as does Krista Toth. Now, if between them, they have been translated into over 20 different languages, ranging from, you know, <coughs> sorry, Hindi to Turkish to, of course, English and French and German and, and other European languages. Uh, the White King alone, uh, Dragoman's award-winning book, has now been translated into 14 languages alone. Uh, the new bus people are, are the young ones, and if you want to find out why there is that buzz surrounding them, I can really only say to, to, to look at the new Windows on Hungary uh, uh, booklet, which you, you can pick up there. Uh, now, these are people who usually have one unexpected hit, or expected hit, uh, under their belt at least, and are working either on a follow-up work or have just brought out a follow-up work. So one or two major works available. And, uh, and there is a, there's something I would like to highlight here. Many among these people so who fall into this youngest age cohort uh, are also, along with other more established authors, uh, great authors of children's literature. And we actually have a separate publication on children's literature that is available, which can also be picked up at the stand. Uh, one of the peculiarities of Hungarian children's lit literature is the, the great amount of crossover that goes on between authors who write books for, I don't know what to call them, adult audiences. Uh, and who venture into children's literature and you get a very creative outcome very often. Couple this with the great Hungarian tradition of book illustration. Uh, just to bring up one fact, uh, Michael Petersham is the most decorated uh, US children's book uh, illustrator ever in the history of United States children's book. He was Hungarian, he was from Hungary, learned the trade in Hungary, came over in the 1930s. And, and revolutionized uh, illustration for children's books in the US. That is the tradition that is native to Hungary. Uh, so uh, illustrators and authors work together very well as a, as a matter of a, a tradition that reaches back several decades. And that's why I decided to highlight this, especially because this is a segment that is often underrepresented when we think of, of, of these great authors. But there is actually a wealth of children's literature uh, with their names on it. Now, to, to wrap up, I don't want to take up too much time, so to wrap up, uh, the, the, I, I, I would like to address, looking back on everything that has been said, what I feel is the, 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 the somewhat special relationship between Hungarian literature and translation. Now, uh, this, why I call this a special relationship is because Hungarian is such an insular language. So there are other small languages. Let's say Bulgarian is not a you know, doesn't have more speakers than Hungarian, uh, nor does Slovak, not even Czech, but those belong to, la belong to language families with, with more porous language borders. Hungarian is an insular language in Central Europe. So Hungarians have always been embedded into this thinking of, of having to translate into Hungarian and having to be translated into foreign languages to, to somehow connect with the rest of the world. And as a result, uh, you have a wealth of agents and publishers in Hungary who are always looking for foreign publishing opportunities and who are you know, good at, at knowing where you get funding from in Hungary. And, and of course, there are organizations, government sponsored that I've been mentioning, Publishing Hungary, uh, the Books and Translations Office. But also, if you approach uh, businesses, they will have this kind of open mindset most of the time. Uh, more importantly, perhaps even, is that there is a for such a small language, a relatively large network of, of experienced translators available, um, there are Hungarian language and translation training posts at universities in 33 countries, including the United States. Uh, most, 
most, by the way, most translators who end up translating Hungarian literature into English and are American tend to come from Indian University, which has a big Hungarian stu studies program. And uh, similarly to Indiana, you have the same in the UK, you have the same in France and so forth. So whenever you have a Hungarian language faculty or chair uh, at a university, that tends to be some sort of a translation focus connected to that, and publishing Hungary uh, has access to these uh, translators. It's a large network uh, that you know spans the globe, really, because of these 33 workshops of, of language teaching and translation methodology teaching um, uh, the world over. And, and we're happy to provide access. Uh, we're happy to provide an entry point for you into that. Uh, and, and because of this tradition, there is a host of organizations, mainly academic, that, that kind of always keep it up to date, uh, the dilemmas of translations, uh, there's many training courses, so you will find a vibrant academic life as well when it comes to translations in Hungary. Just to wrap up, to give you a sense, as far as I know in the United States, there are four universities when you can get a PhD in translation, and that's 300 million people. And uh, Hungary has 10 million, but you have five universities where you can do the same. And uh, uh, so it's a, it, it, it is part of the, the mindset when it comes to publishing that translation is a huge part of what you do and that should help all those interested to, to find the right opportunities there. So thank you very much and I will just ask quickly if there are any questions. There were, uh, there were, uh, I'd be happy to go back and you actually, I, I will say that, that uh, when it comes to the stars, Hungarian literature is still a bit male dominated but it has been shifting in the sense that women always are there in every age group now but m men tend to be somewhat in the majority. The only, so for instance, Krista Todd, there is a female writer, Zsuzsa Rakowski is a female writer. Uh, uh, King of Chapodi, I could have uh, listed others. I think if this is going to flip, then it's going to flip with these guys. It's still male dominated a little, but here I would say there is numerical balance. I do think that male authors still have a slightly easier time reaching audiences and that men, very often audiences, readers are more attuned when it comes to Hungary still to the themes and subject matters which tend to be more handled by, so th there is that male author. But uh, I do think that maybe the generation after this would be also in terms of readership balanced. Here you have a numerical balance, but I don't think quite in terms of success. The, the, there's niches where balance or even a predominance of female authors has been achieved, but uh, it's true that Hungary, I mean, you realize state socialism wasn't very conducive to, to gender equality, despite all the regulations and rules and, and that you had to have the token female person in, in whatever professional context. Um, at the end of the day, it, it wasn't. And that has, the, a, a, a slow correction mechanism is underway, but it, it is a slow one. Here, so many readers are women. Is that true in Hungary too? I mean, that's who the market is for. Yeah, that, that is actually a very interesting uh, question because I don't have fresh numbers for you, but I do remember numbers from a few years back. And yep, uh, even though we, women readers dominate, so the, the root cause, if there is a male dominance, I don't think the root cause of it has to do with the readership, but more like with the establishment which produces, you know, that creates demand for a certain work. It's not an, it's not a, pure supply market. Obviously you have promotions and you have reviewers and, 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 and you make a kind of, it's, it's a supply market at least in part. So it's not a pure demand market, it's partly a supply market. And part of the supply is of course the promotional mechanisms and uh, from you know highbrow reviews down to who gets on TV screens and who gets mentioned and what topics get mentioned, hard boiled crime novels and so forth. I do think it's the route is more there rather than in the readership. 